All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to a, another a video of mine. This one's going to be about this year NVIDIA Quadro RTX 6000. I've recently made a video about a GV100, and this video right here is going to be pretty much the same, except obviously I'm going to be working on this RTX 6000 instead of a GV100. And that does of course also mean that I'm gonna be water cooling it. I've got both the block and backplate right here basically ready to go. And yeah, I guess without further ado, let's start taking it apart. Now, while I'm taking this thing apart, let's talk a bit about the technical specifications of this thing. Got a TU-102 GPU, a fully enabled one, 24 gigs of GDDR6. This specific card has Samsung memory. I obviously already tested it. Um, and mostly it's basically identical to a Titan RTX, except that it's a professional GPU and uh, therefore does have features like, for example, ECC um, GDDR6, which the Titan RTX does not have. Other than that, the other like major thing that differentiates these from their consumer and prosumer uh, brethren is uh, the drivers. Um, the drivers for this thing have quite a bit of validation going into them, which uh, is not really the case for like the game ready drivers. They're basically just, oh yeah, does this game still work? Okay, it's fine, good to go. Whereas the drivers for these things right here are specifically validated for workstation applications. I don't know whether the IO bracket has to come off, but I'm gonna remove it anyways. Actually, yeah, it does have to come off for the water block install, so I'll have to remove it one way or another. Came right off. The last four screws behind the core. Actually, it also just occurred to me that this is my first ever like daily driver TU-102 GPU. I have worked on 2080 Ti's before but this is the first one that I am, at least for a while, going to daily drive. I think it's ready to go. Something that I do actually want to point out um, before I get rid of this heatsink, it's a blower card, but it's surprisingly quiet. It's a surprisingly quiet blower card. Like, when I first got this thing in, or when I first um, saw one of these, I was like, God damn it, Turing blower card, are you kidding me? But these are actually qu quiet. Well, they are god damn it that <laughs> I had not expected that there you go these are typical Fuji poly pads unfortunately they didn't all stick to the um, heatsink I think everyone just kind of hates these pads right here because they are just very very fragile I think I'm already seeing something that I actually kind of like, which begs the question why not every other reference board or founders board does that or has done that in the past. Let me show you. Now, it probably doesn't show up too well on camera here, unfortunately, but if you take a closer look, you can kind of make out what looks a bit like an underfill. You'd be right. That is underfill. These uh, memory modules down by the PCI slot here do have uh, an underfill um, around and underneath them to make sure they don't rip themselves off of the board. Let's take a look at what VRM componentry we've got on here. Now this will be hard to show on camera, so I'll just take a look at it myself for a second here. FDMF 3170s. Now let me look up what those can do really quickly. From the name, I am getting that these are maybe 70 amp smart power stages. FDMF 3170. Yep, I guessed correctly. 70 amp continuous drain current capability, smart power stages. How many do we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, wait a minute. This is VMEM. Totally, you can tell by the inductors right here. So we've got a three-phase VMEM right here. 
and then we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 phases uh, for the GPU, I'm assuming. And uh, VMEM and vCore use the same power stages there. Okay. I don't think there's really a lot more that's interesting about this card. And I guess you do have your current... Um... Actually, no. No, I think actually these are like the... Uh current balancing MOSFETs. I think there's some on the back here too, right there. There's your VRM controller. Actually, yeah, this, what's, what controller is on there? UP9512P. Kind of to be expected, that's like the voltage controller for cheering GPUs out there. Most reference boards and I believe even custom boards use that controller. Yeah, um, I think that's really it. It's really all I can personally talk about. But yeah, uh, let's expose that die, the TU-102 chip, and take a closer look at it. But I, uh, well, the thing is these are RTX 6000s. So I'm not the first one to take a look at these, so I know what it is. It's TU-102-875. Um, but let's do that anyway. So let's see when this card was manufactured. You were made in... Early 2020 fifth week of 2020 that is uh that is i believe rather early on in the cheering life span no wait that's late in the cheering life cycle i'm dumb um cheering came out in late 2018 so this card's actually quite new interesting but there you go t102-875-a1 I believe a Titan RTX is a TU-102-400. Again, these are basically identical. Um, both cards have fully enabled TU-102 silicon. And this is a crap ton of thermal paste. Why did they put on so much? Actually, something that I had meant to say in the GV100 video is that I'd forgotten about it, forgot to mention it. Um, but when I when I remembered, the video was already edited and whatnot. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, you can use mods mats to uh, diagnose defective memory on a Volta GPU. Um, works perfectly fine. Uh, I don't see a reason as to why you would, because if your Volta GPU has dead memory, there's nothing you can do about it because it's HPM, right? So, all right, it's time to continue working on this thing. For you guys, it's probably just been a cut in the video. For me, it's actually been a couple days since I last worked on this because there was one major issue that I unfortunately came across. Now, I want you guys to take a look at this picture and tell me what's wrong with it, or rather with the water block that is in the picture. And you don't have to tell me, obviously, because, uh, well, it's rather obvious what the issue is. It's curved. Um, this water block is actually not the one for this GPU, the RTX 6000. Instead, it's the first GV100 water block that I received from EK back when I worked on the GV100. Check out that video if you haven't seen it. But um, when I noticed that, I opened an RMA ticket EK accepted the RMA basically immediately and even offered cross shipping. Um, so I didn't think too much of it. And uh, the replacement unit that I received wasn't nearly as bad. So I thought it was kind of a one-off issue and that's why I also didn't talk about it in the uh, GV100 video. Thing is, the water block that I received for the RTX 6000 was also quite curved. But when I noticed that I put this project kind of on halt um, for now because uh, I knew that I was likely going to have to RMA it, which would delay this whole project. But um, what I ended up doing is I just bent the block straight. Um, let me show you. If you look down the edge of this block, get my fingers out of the way, I think you can see it's actually nice and flat. It wasn't like that. Now, unfortunately, I didn't take a picture um, of this block before I fixed it, but it was even worse than what you saw in the picture of the GV100 block. I shouldn't have to do this. 
uh, I shouldn't have to bend a water box straight so that I don't end up with a GPU with a nasty bend in the PCB. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because, uh, well, I mean, I guess rather obviously, you don't want to put a bend into your graphics card's PCB. Generally, PCBs are rather bend resistant. I believe Roman has uh, made a video on that even. But graphics cards, obviously, have BGAs on them. In this instance, quite a few. And one of them is especially large because it's a T102, it's a big GPU, right? So, if you are going to be working with these professional blocks from EK, I highly recommend we go and see if the block is curved or has a bend to it before you install it. You're probably unlikely to immediately break your graphics card, but like especially like T102 reference boards, which this is one, uh, they're quite prone to uh, developing memory faults as a result of bends in the PCB. Yeah, I mean, I guess with that said, I'm kind of disappointed, frankly, that this is still an issue with these blocks from EK. Whatever. Um, it's fixed, let's continue the install. Generally, I'm that type of person that does individual thermal pads for everything, but because I've got so much of this stuff here, um, I'm just not going to bother, frankly. The reason I do that, by the way, is because, uh, and I mean, on my Strix 3090, for example, I used Thermal Grizzly pads, which are quite expensive, and if I can, I um, always try to use as little of it as possible, but as much of it as necessary. This should be pretty much perfect for these inductors. There you go. I cut it a bit crooked. Let's see if that's an issue. No, it's not. Okay, that's got the inductors taken care of. That was nice and easy. All right, got that taken care of. Got those, and I need two more. A manual spread, as always, when working with big silicon. Yep, that looks pretty good. So, let's get the screws in there. Now, EK actually tells you, or the manual specifically, says to use these nylon washers right here on every screw. Uh, thing is, it's kind of unnecessary because, um, well, these are fully plated through holes that are intended to have screws in them. Uh, so, kind of unnecessary. So I just leave them out. If I'm installing a, a water block on a graphics card that does not have these nice plated through holes for its screw holes in the PCB, um, I would, of course, use those washers. One issue I found with those is that these washers, they deform over time. What that means is that if you tighten the screws down upon installing the block, and then you do, like, maintenance or whatnot, and then you maybe take your graphics card apart again, what you'll notice is that these screws are quite loose. All right. Now, before I finish putting all the screws in, I reckon it would be a good idea to see which screws 
are going to be used for the back plate. These screws, these three, will have to go in there right now. Okay, these are all now nicely tightened down. Uh, let's get this back plate installed. The um, oops, some old pads right here on the back are actually kind of unnecessary. They're just barely making contact. Okay, I think that's it. I guess with that said, this was yet another video of me working on graphics hardware that I reckon rather few people get to work on and like do what it is that I'm doing right here, which is to put water blocks on them. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider leaving a like on the video as well as subscribing to the channel. Any support in any way, shape or form is genuinely and greatly appreciated and does go a long way in keeping new videos just like this one coming. Now, granted, I don't know how many times I will be working on graphics cards of this caliber, but if I do, you bet there's going to be a video about that. So, oh, hold on a minute. I just noticed something. There were some people screaming right now, probably. Rightfully so. I just realized. I forgot two screws, actually. The other one's unfortunately hidden underneath here, so I will have to take the backplate back off. Yeah, you can, you can really see it's just barely touching the capacitors. Okay, whatever. Almost forgot about you. Okay, I think I think we're good. Okay. Alright, now that I'm actually done, if you guys enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like on it as well as subscribing to the channel for more videos just like this one in the future. And I hope to see you guys again in the very next video. Have a good one.